Hi guys, my name is uh, Jared Labrum. I have a road case on a lumbar spine, a little back pain. I saw this patient, or evaled her, on August 5th, 2013. So guys, I have a 59-year-old female who's not working that was referred for low back pain, sciatica, and stenosis. Uh, her chief complaint is a back pain that radiates down her leg and has been going on for the past couple of months. Uh, it was insidious onset and states that it has all, she has always had pain, but the last couple months have been really bad and something that she's never experienced before. You can take a look at her photo scores there. The patient's primary complaint is in her back. It's a constipated ache. Uh, it's always been there. It becomes sharp with certain type of movements. Um, that will quickly cause P2, which shoots all the way down her leg and is even in her back. P3 is kind of interesting. Um, she says as long as she can have some pressure right there, it usually feels good. Um, you know, even she walking around, she could just push some pressure right there. However, if she sits in a certain position, it's almost like a knife is stabbing her right there, and it, it bothers her a lot. The patient does have numbness and tingling. Um, I think P1, P2, and P3 are, are, can all be related and intermix. However, P3 can be on its own. Uh, here's the structures or areas that may be the source of her symptoms. I'll let you guys take a look at that. Um, my primary hypothesis was lumbar radiculopathy, just based on the fact that the pain was running all the way down her leg and even into her feet, and she had numbness and tingling. Um, secondary, some lumbar disc degeneration, spinal stenosis, lumbar instability, Mechanical low back pain, spondylolisthesis, and spondylolisthesis, um, or some other hypothesis hypotheses that I had. Uh, aggravating and easing factors: um, ADLs and trying to pick things up, walking, doing certain things like that, aggravated her P1 pain the most. Um, interesting, she talked about if she went grocery shopping, if she leaned on a shopping cart while walking in the store. That would help relieve some of her pain. Or if she decided to sit down, um, relax, um, she she would feel better. Um, aggravating factors for P two walking, moving in certain positions, doing ADLs again. You know, usually it would start in her back, and then it would go all the way numbness, tingling, go down her leg, um, and she didn't she didn't like that. Um, to ease that, she would just lay down, just change positions. P three. Um, mostly sitting in a certain position would increase it, and so just changing positions would fix that problem. Um, sleep in 24-hour pattern. Um, the patient said she struggles sleeping at night, even with sleep meds. Um, she's unable to perform basic ADLs without pain. Um, pain is constant throughout the day and becomes worse with activities and has to change positions constantly because... She can't sit for too long, she can't stand for too long, vice versa. Um, she says the duration of her current systems, her, her biggest quote was, I've had pain always, back pain always, but these current systems, symptoms that have been bothering her a lot have been um, the past couple months, and it's just slowly been pro progressing, getting worse. Um, she doesn't remember doing anything to injure her back, just kind of um, gradually just been getting worse and worse. Um, it's had fever and night sweats and chills. She suffers from incontinence. Uh, cancer removed from her lung, she said recently. She has depression, PTSD. She can't take NSAIDs. Um, she, she had a lot going on. Um, she's, she said she was getting help for depression. It's, I didn't get into too much detail, but she mentioned that she had been sexually abused when she was younger. And um, she's also had back surgery to remove, remove bone spurs. Um, it was quite the, the history taking that, that took up quite a bit of time. So trying to sort through and find out um, the things that were most important and kind of some red flags and stuff like that which I'll get to here next. But uh, kind of her medical history, comorbidities. Um, they said she had fatigue, fevers, chills, night sweats, 
She can't remember how long she's had fevers, but she says it comes and goes. Um, but she'll start sweating at night. Um, she has sal paresthesia, um, numbness, weakness, bowel and bladder problems, and cancer removed in her lung. Uh, when I asked her if she ever had cancer, she said, yes, I had surgery and removed um, something from her lungs. Um, yellow flag, she suffers from depression. Um, anxiety, panic disorders, arthritis, PTSD, uh, diabetes, too. Um, what she says she does keep in under control, but those are kind of part of her core morbidities that it, um, just aren't helping her overall health and condition. Uh, she's obese, and she was a very big lady. She's 5'6", 261, um, and she's also had previous surgeries um, in her lumbar spine. Um, later after doing an exam and everything like that, we took a look at an, an older MRI that she had received, um, and she had actually had a, a hemangioma in her sacral spine um, that may have been causing some of her, her symptoms, um, especially in the, the saddle area, but just from talking to her, she had been through a lot. It sounded like she had been passed from doctor to doctor. She'd seen her primary care physician. She'd seen now, a neurologist, spinal surgeon, she had seen a urologist um, for her incontinence and was just kind of getting passed around. Um, she was taking medication for diabetes. She was on blood thinners. She had an ACE inhibitor, Crestor, Xanax, Cymbalta, and she can't take anti-inflammatories that causes her GI problems. Uh, what we use for asterisk signs from the history? Um, 8 out of 10 after doing ADLs for 15 minutes, that was what she would rate her pain. Um, numbness and tingling down the leg, uh, sharp pain and cell paresthesia in certain positions was for P3. Um, our primary hypothesis is still, I'm thinking lumbar radiculopathy hasn't really changed. Um, I am worried about a serious pathology um, just based off everything that she's um, talked to me about. Um, you know, there she has multiple red flags. That's something that I, I definitely want to screen here um, in my physical examination. But she could have DDD, spinal stenosis, instability, and low back pain. It could be all of these, um, actually. And right now I haven't ruled out any musculoskeletal or non-musculoskeletal issue. So the severity of the condition here is probably moderate to severe, um, probably more severe than moderate because she was so painful all over and had many red flags. And um, she complains of not being able to do household chores around the house and basic ADLs that she used to be able to do all the time. Um, I would say her condition is um, moderate to severe irritability. She only rated her pain 4 out of 10, but was flared up because she would not, I mean, any sort of movement or position that we tried to put her in, um, while she would do it, it caused a lot of pain, and she'd have to reposition herself or, or move in a different position um, to find relief. I definitely think this is a neurological and musculoskeletal issue. Um, she's in a subacute um, condition with a flare-up, you know, subacute, I guess, the healing of the tissue and with a flare-up of her chronic condition. Her current, um, you know, what is the stability of her current disorder? I would say P1, P2, and P3 are stable and can be reproduced with asterisk signs. So what will I include to rule and rule out my top three hypotheses? A lumbar and hip range of motion, palpation of muscles, tendons, bony structures, you know, things like prone PAs. Uh, neurodynamic testing, straight leg raise, lump, cross straight leg raise, myotomes, sternotomes, reflexes. Um, I won't defer any of the above um, things that I want to rule in or rule out. Um, precautions or contraindications, um, there's none. Uh, postural observations, uh, I would just say... I mean, I wrote none, but her overall presentation was someone with in, you know, a lot of pain. I didn't like to move or anything like that. 
Um, you can take a look at what I found for my neurological exam. Um, her reflexes were really hard to get. Um, I, her Achilles tendon reflex on the left side was absent. I could not get that. Um, she had diminished light touched all on the left side. Um, positive straight leg raise, cross straight leg raise, and there's all less than 45 degrees that would cause her back pain. She also had a positive slump. You can take a look at her range of motions. Hip was within normal limits. She was actually very mobile in her hip. Problem was, is it was painful, especially in an external rotation. Um, she actually moved really well in the lumbar area, but for her, she said that it was pretty bad. I mean, she could almost touch her toes, yet she said, you know, she's always been able to touch her palms on the floor without any problems. And she felt like most of the stuff that was restricting her was in her back. So in the physical exam, you know, she was tender to palpation and both um, piriformis um, and the glutes and spinous process. Um, you know, L2 through L5 caused wincing withdrawal reduced her back and hip pain. Um, I didn't find any spinal segment or joint restrictions. Um, she was more just guarded in that area and did not want me to touch. Um, manual muscle testing. Patient was painful and weak all over. Um, she could not walk on her toes or her heels. Um, almost every in a lower quarter screen on the left side. I just did a 3 plus out of 5 and the right was 4 out of 5 just because you know, there was a significant difference between right and left, but she was just so uh, weak and painful on, on the left side. Um, motor control, she did not have very good control of her multifidus. I put her in prone and told her just to lift up her leg, and it was a lot heavier on, on the left side that she would describe, and it was hard for her to do that. Special tests, um, I, I, I kind of went over those. Those were positive right there. Um, traction. And compression were, were both uh, painful, kind of there, the hip, lumbar, spine. She did not like um, traction or compression. Um, so my primary hypothesis, I, I'm still thinking lumbar radiculopathy. Um, you know, asterisk signs, I would say 8 out of 10 pain after 15 minutes of ADLs. Um, numbness and tingling with pain down the leg and sitting. Um, there's a sharp pain and with uh, saddle paresthesia. Um, physical exam, um, straight leg raise, lumbar active range of motion, you know, slump, manual muscle test, reflexes, and you know, prone load, multifidus. So prognosis, uh, actually I really thought she was fair. I mean, she had so many things going on, so many issues and anxious and red flags. I, I didn't know if she... Well, would recover well um, from things like this. Um, I th think it would take about an eight to ten weeks um, for someone like her. I mean, a lot longer than your typical patient that has uh, lumbar radiculopathy. Um, so we wanted to see this patient about two times a week and, and taper it down to once a week or until our visits run out with her insurance. She was very limited on how many times she could see us or how many units we could use. As far as specific goals, I want to reduce her P1 pain to 2 out of 10 in 6 weeks, increase her photo score to at least 45 in, in 8 weeks, and have patient tolerate basic ADLs pain level to 2 to 3 out of 10 in 4 weeks. And if my patient is not progressing, at what point will you stop treatment and what would be your plan? I'd say about 4 visits uh, without any improvement or for red flags or pain just seems to be getting um, a lot worse. I mean, she has a lot of things we need to monitor and keep close of, and if any of those things seem to change or, or get worse, uh, we definitely need to refer back to her MD. So, overall uh, management strategy, I think I want to do a trigger point and try needling to calm down radicular symptoms, increase pain-free range of motion in the lumbar spine, do some neuromuscular re-education, core stability, endurance, and overall strength for the lower extremities. If you guys have any questions, just please post them in the forum. Thanks. Bye.